Welcome to the 68th Annual GCI Open North American Sled Dog Championships. I'm Michael Dukes and I'll be bringing you all the action from 2nd Avenue and the trails around Fairbanks. Let's meet the 15 mushers who will be competing in this year's race. Our first team to the line is driven by John Earhart, a veteran musher who comes to the line with a young team and high hopes. Um, I'd like to try to make the top five this year. I got a young dog team, we'll see how it goes. Team number two belongs to Paula Sinero, who's running in her third Open North American. I did 15th the first year, 13th the second year, and if I can get 12th, 11th, that would be, that would be awesome for me. Mike Fields is a Fort Yukon musher who's looking for one thing in this year's race. Uh, mostly experience. I got a kind of young and up and coming team. So I'm just kind of giving them that race experience, kind of building. Team number four is driven by Mark Hardham, a Canadian musher who's looking forward to a fast, exciting race. Well, I think it's going to be a really exciting race. Um, we've been up here for a couple of weeks. We came up for the World Championships and also for the Junior North Americans, so we've had a chance to train up on the trail five or six times now, and uh, it's the fastest trail we've ever seen since we started coming up here in 2004, so it'll be good. Number five is Jack Berry, a former long distance musher. I've done six Iditarods and six Yukon Quests. Um, the last five years I switched over to uh, open sprint motion. Marvin Cochran has been running this race since 1975. He's a former champion who's hoping for a strong finish. I hope to get in the top five, but it, it wouldn't be easy though. Jesse Holmes is the lone rookie in this year's field, but he's no stranger to sled dog racing. This will be my first time running the Open North American. Ah, I feel good. I've been around the race a lot and I'm just happy to get out there on the trail and get the experience. The eighth musher out is Ken Chizik, who had a good reason for coming all the way from Michigan to compete in this race. Because it's the North American. It's one of the most prestigious races out there. It has a huge history. Um, the, the town puts out a ton of um, enthusiasm. Uh, the competition is the best. Greg Sellington is a musher from Skagway who's back for his second Open North American. It's a tough race. The combination of fast trails, a little bit of urban environment, um, and distance uh, is, is a real, real test of a dog team uh, and a test of your training. And I, I didn't do real well that first race, but I didn't expect to. Um, I have a much different team two years later and uh, I'm really, you know, hoping for a top five finish. Going out 10th is Rob Warden and he's got a good feeling about this year's race. Uh, I'd like to be in a top 10 finish. Um, I'm pretty optimistic that we can do that, but uh, the team's looking really good and the training's been, been decent. So I'm actually, uh, actually my gut feeling's a little bit better than that. So. Musher number 11 is Don Cousins, a Canadian who's been a regular in this race since the 1980s. Myself, this will be my 26th time running the race. Uh, my daughter ran it once, so that's 27. I was up here handling for Jim Harvey in 1982, so that's 28. And I leased dogs out to Jim Harvey and Dale Rado one year, so that's 29 times I've been actually involved in the race. Musher number 12 is the undisputed king of the Open North American. Egil Ellis has won this race 12 of the last 14 years and placed second in this year's Fur Rendezvous. He comes to the starting line with a small speedy team. Had a great season so far with it, so we're down to a small team now, but it's the, the, the very core of the kennel and they're a great group of dogs, so I'm having I'm high hopes for them this weekend. <laughs> Michael Tetzner is going out 13th, having come all the way from Bork, Germany, to run this race. I'm a musher since 26 years. I breed my own bloodlines, and uh, since the last, I think, 13 years, I come over to Alaska for racing and bring my own dogs with me. Mike Stevens is a local musher who's going out 14th. Oh, I'm just pretty much hoping to run a good race. Uh, the dog team is, I really like them. They're doing real well. It's, I'm getting later on in my career and I'm, you know, I just want to get it run and see if I can keep doing it for another couple of years. Arlie Reynolds is starting this race in the back of the pack, but don't expect him to stay there. He's coming off a huge win in the Anchorage Fur Rendezvous less than a month ago. Like there's going to be some great competition, really fast trails. Um, our goal is to win it, but in order to do that, we've got to get by some pretty good dog teams. You know, Eagle has won this thing 12 or 13 times. We've been second to him three times, so. We're hoping we can take that one last step this weekend. 
When we return, we'll take you out onto the trails as the 2013 GCI Open North American Championship continues. Why are so many people buying from Chevrolet Buick GMC of Fairbanks? Promo pricing. The most popular cars and trucks with the features you want, the price you need, and always several to choose from. Come browse our huge inventory of new cars, trucks, and SUVs in many makes and models. Chevrolet Buick GMC of Fairbanks. Come take a test drive today or shop online at FairbanksChevy.com. At GCI, we've hit the pause button on our TV rates, a total price freeze for the entire year, so you can keep watching all the shows you love. We'll even throw in more channels without raising our rates, unlike the satellite guys who've hit fast forward on what they charge, and who knows where that'll stop. But at GCI, we've iced our rates for the whole year, and if you're locked into a satellite contract, we'll buy it out. A price freeze. That's pretty cool. GCI TV. You call, we install. Simple. Today's trail conditions were absolutely superb. A good combination of not too hot and not too cold. Warmer weather has a tendency to soften the snow, making it harder to pull through. This increases the work for the dogs and actually slows the musher down. On the other hand, temperatures in the sub-zero range make it not only hard on the dogs, but on the mushers as well. Today's race was full of beautiful sunshine at temperatures just a few degrees above the zero mark. Temperatures that allow for hard and fast trails but are also cool enough to allow the dogs to run mile after mile. And that's exactly what these mushers are looking for. Dogs who are ready to tackle just about anything. And hey, it's Fairbanks. You never know what you're going to run across. It's very easy to advertise on GCI. They make it a very smooth process. One of the key benefits for me for cable advertising is it's basically one-stop shopping. I'm able to call my rep with my ads and get them on immediately in all of the key markets that I have. We needed to expand our target audience and GCI really provided a great avenue for doing that. So Michael, tell me about, uh, tell me about your race today. Oh, I had a good race so far, but when I come back on the slew, you know, uh, there was a crazy snow loader, I don't know the name, what's the right name, but my team was running on the left side and he loaded all the snow up, I think the earth goes down, right? So all the snow come on my team and I try to come out of this, you know, I, I don't know what was happening. And then I see that and I say to him, hey man, and he was just loading more snow and more snow, so it looked like the trail is near close, so the next post team couldn't go around, I think, because they come here, but uh, I was thinking I died today, you know. So he was actually dumping the snow out of the loader while you were going on yeah, the trail? Yeah, right on me. Amazing, yeah. amazing. Yeah. You guys made it out. It, they pulled back. We heard there was some obstruction on the trail. Yeah, yeah. The, the dogs pulled back, but when, when I come here, my team was really struggling because uh, uh, one or two dogs, dogs, I think they get hurt. I have to check later, you know, but they don't want to pull anymore, and, and they were so fine just before that. Right? And, of course, being afraid of that, coming right. down on top right. of them. Yeah. Oh yeah, well we'll find out what that was about because yeah, there's there a couple things like that. We'd heard it had been obstructed. We didn't know that you were there when it happened. Right, right, right. So give me the name. <laughs> we'll, find, we'll find out who <laughs> no, it is. I'm joking. Overall, you had a you, so your your time was incredible today. You had a really good day. Yeah. Uh, how are you feeling overall about uh, tomorrow's chances if these dogs come back and everything turns out okay? Oh, I you know really always said the second day is the hardest day, but I I hope I can stay in the top ten for this. This is my goal and finish the race. But um, when I can go on a third day, my team is tough for the third day, so I'm only scared of them tomorrow. All right, well, we, good luck to you. We'll find Thank out you. about that. We'll keep that snow off your dogs, okay. okay? Thank you. All right, thanks, Michael. Bye. Overall, great day. Now, of course, you and uh, yeah. you and Arlie going back and forth. You know, he just did Rondi. Now you're going here. Yeah. How yeah. you feeling about that uh, for this year? Oh, it's, it's excellent. I mean, we always have good, good uh, you know, rivalry going on. Him and Kenny and I, we, we always have fun racing each other. And you guys are the exciting. triple threat, I think. Yeah, the three yeah. of you, you're always so, duking uh, it out. I haven't heard the times right now, but I'm, I'm, I hope I didn't, you know, I'm not too far behind on this. No, your, uh, your day time for today was um, 62.19.3. Okay. Uh, and uh, Arley was 61.30. That was a, that, but I think that accounts for your two minute uh, at the gate for sure. Yeah. And then Ken was 61.36.5. Yeah. So that gate is going to be a, 
need guards. There. We need guards at the gate. I think that's guards a bad deal. Gate, yeah. All right. And uh, another, I couldn't get my GPS working going out either, so I was kind of in the, in the, you know, I wasn't sure how fast I was going really, but you know, I kind of judged it on the times I heard from Kenny and, and Arlie, and, but it sounded like we were going fairly, fairly you were equal the whole way. Yeah, you were fairly close. You were you were within about six seconds. Uh, okay. Mo through most yeah. of the checkpoints, yeah. six to ten seconds through most right. of the checkpoints. So it was a little surprising to see you come back at the at the end there. So, oh, good day. well, Eggles, good to see you. Good luck tomorrow. We'll Thank see you. if we can keep those gates open yeah, for you. All right. For sure, we need that. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. You were just booming it out there. I mean, you were on top the almost the entire time. How did it feel trail wise? I mean, it was faster. You just seemed to really be able to keep up the pace. Yeah, though the trail was really good. It was hard and fast. A little drifty in the open areas, but uh, no, it was excellent. You know, the only difficult spot we ran into on the way back is somebody dumped the snow on the trail with a big loader so you come along and there was a trail there on the way out and now there's a big snow pile on on the way back. <laughs> oh. so that kind of caught I think it happened to maybe the people at the back end you know kind of caught us a little bit by surprise but the dog jumped over it and away they went. Through. Seemed to get seemed to get all the way through. Yeah. Uh, now you're feeling pretty good about your daytime weren't quite as fast as I expected because you had stayed up you lost a little bit there at the end was it the, the was it the snow burn that got you or what, what do you think uh, kind no, of slowed you down at no, the end? No I don't think so I think uh, the last big race we ran was the Paul Manitoba and that's 335 mile heats so they probably were pacing themselves down a little bit, thinking they still had another 15 miles to go. You know, so right. As opposed to, oh, now we're done here. Now, wait, now. wait, here's how it goes. Yeah. Well, a fantastic day for you. I mean, you really consistently through every checkpoint right up to the end, you were you were really bombing it in number one, and I hope tomorrow uh, things continue on for you that way. Yeah, that, I think that's the fastest I've run this trail on the first day ever, so I'm really quite pleased with that. Good. Now, strategy for tomorrow, if you want to give up some strategy for your competitors there, what do you think about tomorrow based on the trail and all the conditions today? Well, you know, the second day is always a little difficult. People have to be smart with the number of dogs they take and which ones, so I will, we'll go with a good, strong strategy, let the dogs run, let them run their own pace tomorrow. Were you happy with the number of dogs you took out there? Yeah, it was perfect. I didn't take too many and I didn't take too few. It was just perfect. It's always a gamble, isn't it, at that point? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. All right, well, Don Cousins, congratulations on a great first day total. I appreciate you coming out and good luck to you tomorrow. Thank you, Brian. Greg Sellington, uh, great day today. You had some great times. How'd you feel about the whole race? I felt really great. Uh, the dogs went out strong. I thought maybe they were running too fast, but they seemed comfortable. They seemed well within their comfort envelope. And I just let them do their thing. You know, we've trained all summer. Uh, we've actually been training for this race since I last did it two years ago, you know, and uh, we just, we trained right and I let them do what they do on their own today. And, uh, you know, it seemed like the conditions for the dogs were supreme. No dogs, anybody, nobody had to pull any dogs today. Uh, and a really nice, fast trail. Yeah, I think there was one dog that came in a, bas in, in a basket that I know about. But, you know, fast trails uh, are, they can be good and bad. Uh, the, the old adage is speed kills. And you can, you can get going really fast. And if the whole team is running fast, if there's a dog in the team that needs a break, it can't get a break if you're going fast. It, on a slower trail, they can. So uh, it, good trails are nice because you don't usually have injuries from, that you have with soft trails, but it really taxes you know, a dog team. You really got to know that all your dogs are in shape. Now we heard about some things happening on the trail, some unusual stuff, uh, a gate closure, a snow load being dumped on the trail. Did you experience anything like that out yeah, there? Yeah, well the first thing on, in the slough on the way out, there was a little dog that looked like a, um, uh, just just like a, a Chinese uh, little like sausage dog uh, with a jacket that my team ran over uh, and uh, but we didn't lose any time doing that uh, and then in, in about that same spot there were those big ice chunks uh, in the slough and I thought it was kids rolling those things down the hill but I guess a front loader was working on the road next to it um, so we had to actually stop there I actually slowed down and stopped and uh, let the dogs put, pick their way through it because you, you don't want to, you know, that close to the finish, you don't want them to hurt themselves. And the sled bounced off it, you know.